Today I'd like to continue our journey through the uh, book of Judges uh, and uh, take a look at the rest of chapter 7, the amazing story of Gideon and uh, verse of something that we would think should take place. Uh, normally you want to increase your army. <laughs> Here on the other hand, we have Gideon decreasing his army. Um, so at this point, he is down to just 300 soldiers from 22,000, quite a, a, a difference. Uh, and Gideon has just overheard this dream about the uh, round barley loaf that's going to take down the tent, uh, symbolizing the Israelites who are agricultural, so the round barley loaf would take away the Midianites who are nomadic, thus the tent. So the stream, for whatever reason, gives great confidence to Gideon. Again, showing the importance of dreams in the scriptures. We've seen that earlier in the book of Genesis with Joseph. We're going to see it later in the uh, Christian scriptures with uh, Joseph, uh, the stepfather of Jesus, when he has the dream about uh, Mary and, and really protecting Mary from any harm. So Gideon has this dream, and this dream has given him confidence. And he's now confident that, yes, my forces, my 300 men, are going to overcome the Midianites against all odds, very improbable, but he has confidence. So what does he do? Uh, he comes up with a battle plan. And in his battle plan, he divides the 300 into three companies. So we have 100 over here, 100 here, and 100 there. Gideon provides his men uh, with uh, horns, with empty jars, and with torches inside the jars. And he told those men to follow his example. So this is his equipment. Uh, again, very strange to bring into battle, right? Uh, the horns. Horns, we can see horns a lot of times used in battle to scare the opposition. But empty jars, torches. This is, uh, again, not your standard battle equipment. Uh, no bows and arrows, no spears, no swords. Uh, so Gideon uh, says, you know, just follow what I do and, and you'll be fine. So Gideon uh, blows his horn, and uh, all the men, he says, when I blow my horn, you all blow your horns. Uh, and then they were to cry out with the horns being blown. Uh, simultaneously with that, they were to cry out for the Lord and for Gideon. So there they are, they're given their plan. We're going to scream, blow our horns, cry out. That's what we're going to do. So they come about two hours before midnight. So it's under the cover of darkness. Uh, and that was a good time because that was just after the posting of the guards. So now they knew that there would just be guards out there and a lot of the others would be asleep. Well, they blew their horns and then they break their jaws, all three together. They were all making this noise together in concert. The torches were in their left hand, and the horns that they were blowing were in the right hand. And they cry out together uh, for the Lord and for Gideon. And they stayed in their places around the camp. They were kind of surrounding the camp. They stayed in their places. They didn't move. And all the Midianites in the camp, when they hear this, they hear this noise and these horns and jars and uh, they start running and they start shouting and fleeing and they're like, oh, we're under attack. What's happening? It's the middle of the night. Uh, and the 300 soldiers just keep on blowing their horns. And the army of the Midianites fled all the way to Beth Shittah. So there they go. They take off. They're gone from the scene. Uh, they're obviously afraid with all this noise, this clamor that has been created by Gideon and his 300 soldiers. And the Israelites from Natali, Asher, and Manasseh were all called to arms then, and they pursued the Midianites. So all of these different tribes now are going to be involved, and they pursue these Midianites who are fleeing, who are scared, <coughs> and the Ephraimites 
uh, were called to arms, and they seized the water courses as far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. So obviously crucial here for the Midianites and um, the, the others who were with them would have been the water, uh, water to feed their horses, to feed their uh, people, very crucial. So cut off those water courses, you can't go near them. Again, a very good strategy to kind of send the people into panic and to realize we got to keep on running. We, we don't even access to water here. The two princes of Midian then, Oreb and Zeab, were killed. And their heads were carried to Gideon beyond the Jordan. So uh, they, after they're killed, one of the traditions in this type of warfare was to take the heads of the leaders and to show that you had conquered the people, the heads of the leaders would be displayed. So the Ephraimites now are mad at Gideon that he did not call upon them to fight the Midianites. Called on them later just to deal with the water courses and why didn't you call on us? Uh, and again, part of this now could be, well, now the Israelites have won under Gideon and there's going to be booty involved and we want to get our fair share and you didn't call upon us. So there's an economic motive here a little bit to the Ephraimites and why they are so upset with uh, with Gideon uh, for not getting them more involved. But Gideon praised them. He praised them for killing Ora ben Zeb. And uh, after he publicly praised them and said, thank you for doing this, you killed two of the leaders. That was wonderful. The Ephraimites were like, you know, Raising us, that's a good thing, and uh, they were they were kind of, you know, really happy that they had been praised publicly. So this was a good thing for them. Uh, and so their anger that they had originally is now gone after this praise. The Ephraimites felt that they were the leading tribe. They were like, you know, we're the leading tribe. We're got the best lands and we're doing so well and we should be the, the the premier battle force since we're the leading tribe and of course the other thing about not being called the economic reality of the booty uh, Gideon now is pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna who are the kings of Midian uh, and he asked uh, in his pursuit he asked for food from the princes of Succoth and Penuel, but they refused. Not a good thing, because if you refuse to help with food, uh, there could be some retribution involved here. Uh, I mean, the troops, they needed food, they were in pursuit. Uh, the idea that you should cooperate and help them with food was pretty standard, uh, unless you were going to take opposition to Gideon and to his forces. So Gideon said, well, you didn't give me food. Uh, get ready. Because when I return, you better be careful. And we'll find out what happens when Gideon returns. <laughs>